This is my camera guy, clearly doing his job. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys what I learned and all the photos that I took, well, most of the photos, some of the photos, over a full year, 365 days. It's February 18th to February 18th. I knew going into this that I was gonna to have to try different photo techniques because my photography was getting a little stale. I was shooting the same things and I knew that if I was forced to take a photo every day for 365 days, I would have to be shooting something that's so different that I've never shot before, like sports or food or even eyeballs. So that being said, let's take a look at our first photo, which is this photo right here. It's a photo I took in Long Beach, California with the Mavic 2 Pro. I remember WandaVision had just come out and they had those trailers where it went like from black and white to color, kind of like I did here, black and white to color. So just right off the bat, trying something totally new, playing with color, just having fun with it. Not every photo is gonna be amazing. What I did was I had to separate the photos by a more photojournalistic or documentary type of photo, and then a photo that was actually pretty good, and maybe it was a totally different technique that I tried. An example could be the day that I got the yellow iMac versus the day that it rained in LA, which happens very rarely, and I went and shot a giant pano of downtown Los Angeles and got it printed, and it looks something like this. Look at that. That is just a very big pan. Hang on, let's hold that up to the camera. Can you see that? Yeah, that's, that's nice. Very nice. If you haven't ever printed your work, by the way, I would highly recommend doing it. You have a new perspective on your photography and people might want to buy it. Okay, so <laughs> next up we have our best story photo. So. Los Angeles Marathon happened in October of last year and I, let's just say, got into the finish line in questionable ways. It was fine, nothing, no one was hurt or anything. Uh, because I wanted to shoot a lot of the people that I knew crossing the finish line. So this was the guy that actually came in first and then, <laughs> yeah, this is one of my friends in the running community. It, it's a great video. I'll probably link to it somewhere here in the description. I would highly, highly recommend watching it. It was, it was a lot of fun getting into the Los Angeles Marathon finish line. Okay, tip number two. Use every camera that you have available to you. I still work a full-time job. There were days that I didn't have time or the energy or the bandwidth to take a drone or a Sony camera or a Nikon. So I'd have to use this thing, an iPhone, which shoots raw photos now. And you can take some great photos. Like this one I took at Santa Monica Pier the day the iPhone 13 came out. Same day, the sky and everything was just absolutely gorgeous. We had low tide, it was fantastic. This was shot with the iPhone as well. Just looked up in downtown Los Angeles. And then we have this too. This was on a run one morning. We have a puddle here and the sky here. So it's all about perspective. It's all about what kind of camera you have and the best camera you have is the one that you have on you. So as I was getting in months and months into this project, I was realizing I was starting to just shoot the same thing over and over again, which is what I was trying to stop doing in the first place. So I decided to try different sports. And what better place to do that than Southern California, where people like to surf? <laughs> okay, so I went out and shot some surfers. And this was the first photo ever that I shot of surfers. Just, yeah, smack right into the face. So this was shot with a Nikon Z6 at a 28 to 300 millimeter lens. Uh, as I started to upgrade my equipment, I went out and shot 
some newer surfing picks. These look much sharper and much better. This is actually with the Tamron 150 to 500, which I might be doing a review for. I don't know, I'm undecided. If you guys wanna see that, maybe let me know in the comments below. But absolutely love these photos. It was fantastic just trying something new, different kinds of sports, which leads me into my next tip. For tip number three, I would highly recommend using a website called Unsplash. Now they are not the sponsor of this video because I only have 189 followers on YouTube. We've been growing, which is great. We're trying to get to a thousand by the end of the year. So if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Okay, so Unsplash, it's a great website to gain some great exposure. They have the world's largest source of stock photography. This is me, this is my profile. These are photos that I've submitted. If I go to my stats here, I can see that, oh, just in the past 30 days, 7.2 million people have viewed my photography, which is pretty great. If we go to all time, which has been about three years, 341,542,537 people have viewed my photography. It's led me to some of my biggest clients and it's also led me to be in a pickleball magazine, which is the next photo that we're gonna go over. So if you are not familiar with the sport of pickleball, it's actually the fastest growing sport in America. It's played on, I think a quarter of the size of a tennis court. It's played with wiffle balls, it's only underhand. This was a photo that I went and shot out of my friend, uh, Michael, because I wanted to try some different sports. So I went out and shot him playing with his pickles, as I like to say. And he hits me up a few months later, and here we discover that his photo, this one right here that I took, uh, was published in a pickleball magazine. So I'm officially a published photographer. Okay, so still on the subject of Unsplash. So every year Unsplash hosts an award ceremony or rather a competition of the photos, the best photos submitted every year. Now, this was a photo that I had took. This is my most technical photo, I would say, out of all the ones that I've taken. And the fact that I had to do many different exposures for this. So I had to do one exposure for the foreground, and which is about a 30 second exposure, as you can see the light trails for the car, and then not move the camera, and then wait for two hours and leave the camera sitting on a tripod, and then take nine separate exposures of the sky at a lower ISO, combine those nine photos into one photo, and then import that sky into this photo to create this composite image. This was a photo that I had actually submitted onto Unsplash last year, and it was actually voted the best photo of the year. And so I guess this technically makes me an award winner, award winning photography. It's kind of nice, Cameron Venti selected in photo of the year. It's, it's got some heft. The other thing they sent was they sent this photo book of all the winners. And if we go through and we look, look who's on the last page, boom. I get a full page right there, baby. Look at that, mm, so good. So in June of last year, I decided to open up my own photography studio because this is Los Angeles and everyone needs headshots because we're all actors and YouTubers and whatever, everyone needs content. And I decided to do it because I was always intimidated by studio photography and strobes versus continuous lights and different soft boxes and lighting and remotes and all these things. And I knew that if I was gonna do this photo 365, it was something I needed to do because I had to get outside my comfort zone. So. We have our very first photo here of my lovely model, Rachel. Fine photo, nothing wrong with it, right? Dramatic, black and white. And over the months, I started progressing and getting better and trying newer techniques and different things in the studio. Here we have another shot of a model named Eve. I was still in continuous lighting with this at this point. And then I started getting a little bit more creative. I got a macro lens and I finally got strobes. So I shot this amazing photo of my friend Alana and her eye, just absolutely stunning, stunning eye. I started to do a little bit more sporty things in the studio as well. This is Julie here, we're using strobes, trying different techniques, using a grid with two different size soft boxes. 
this was the neon sign that I actually had made up for my studio here, which I'm really, really a fan of and I absolutely love it. It's got that le lovely, nice neon hum when you, uh, when you turn it on. I think that's all the mercury running through it. And then we have some of my most recent photos from the studio. This is probably my favorite photo I've ever taken. Uh, it's a very dramatic photo. It's actually for his new music album coming out. I absolutely love this photo. He actually did this album with this girl as well, so I had to get shots of the both of them. So we put some gels on there and did some very harsh dramatic lighting, and it ended up working out really, really well. So when I decided to do this photo 365 challenge, I already knew exactly what the last photo was gonna be. It's something that I envisioned from the first day that I decided to do this. And that photo is... I decided to get finger tattoos. So F365, F for F stop, 365 for 365 days of photography. And then I actually, this was kind of a last minute decision, I decided to get the Pete's Pirate Life uh, sigil here, cause I, symbol, icon, logo, whatever you want to call it, pirate flag with a skull in it. Cause Peter McKinnon is obviously a huge inspiration to me and I'm sure to everyone watching this video too. And I just thought it would look really cool to have a pirate thing on my middle finger, which is, yeah, well, there you go. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.